It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. This round is Moto America Superbikes at New Jersey from Millville, from New Jersey Motorsports Park, also known as NJMP, for our final race weekend of the season for Super Sport. We got race number one on deck, and yeah, you're looking at those pictures. It is wet outside. Welcome everyone to the broadcast. I'm Greg White. Standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason Chavi Forez is the champion, but Tyler Scott has been on a rip as of late. He really has been, and for Chavi, it's a good thing that he came here already having wrapped up the championship because with this weather, it could definitely throw a, could have thrown a wrench in it. But Ty Scott's definitely on a, on a good pace right now. We saw him, what he did at Coda, and uh, he's trying to do the same thing here uh, uh, this weekend and, and finish the season strong. So there is a storm in the area. Let's take a look at the radar and see kind of what we're looking at because it has been raining heavily all day today. And, Jason, you can see where it says Vineland right there, kind of in the middle part of your screen. That's what we're looking at. And so storms have been coming in and out. The wind is blowing really strong. How does it affect these riders, uh, you know, that are going to be racing here today? Yeah, yeah. no, I think that for the riders, it's just been one of those mornings where, like you say, it's been on and off. But for the majority of them, I've seen, I've seen a couple of them go through and do two siding laps as well before the start of this race. So um, the weather's just something they're going to have to deal with, another element. Tyler Scott has been the fastest rider so far this weekend. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that Tyler Scott's been up to this year. Yeah, you can see here, him and Chavi Forrest had a great last lap battle. This is the last lap in Coda, race number two. They both went way outside the limits there, but uh, it, that, that wasn't where it would finish. As it came down to the two corners from the end, Chavi decided to take another bite at that and uh, wasn't quite able to make it. It was an incredible last lap, probably the best last lap, and you can see the mutual respect between both riders here as Chavi had wrapped up the championship a day earlier. Take a look at these numbers. He came in in 2021, did the 17-year-old, and he's got 11 wins and was the champion in Junior Cup. And then last year to this year, Jay, you can see, he's got more points and more wins so far. Yeah, he's been able to take advantage of the bad weekends this year, and then he's learned a lot. Plus, that team has done such a really good job this year, G-Dub, the M4 X-Star Suzuki team, have done such a great job on getting them more comfortable on that 750. It was the new, new rules last year, so they had a lot of work to do on that GSX-R, and now we're starting to see some of that come to uh, to for them. Yeah, but really all eyes are on the Spaniard, Chavi Forez, who comes into this season. Of course, he's a rookie here. He's 37 years old, but he comes out of the gate strong as you like, eight wins in a row. That's kind of what we expected, though, isn't it? At the beginning of the year, we thought that Chavi would do exactly what he did and uh, went on to dominate. Let's get to the third member of our broadcast team, Hanalopa, who's outside in the weather right now on the grid with Chavi Forez. Rain's not too bad out here right now, Greg, but as you were saying, Chavi's got a lot of experience riding a lot of different motorcycles in various conditions around the world. Chavi, would you say that your experience in the past has really prepared you to tackle New Jersey on the Ducati in the wet? Well, this morning I didn't feel so good on the, on the, on the wet, but hopefully we, we, we made a big changes on the bike. Hopefully I can have a, a little bit more uh, confidence on, on the bike for the, for the world race, but I'm not going to take any risk. I want to stay on the wheels. The, 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 the track is not on the, on the best conditions, so it's going to be a long race for everyone. Chavi Forez looking to stay focused. Now, another rider that we have seen at the top of the timesheets this morning who is notorious for doing well in the rain in the past but hasn't had too many opportunities in the U.S. to ride in the rain is David Anthony. Doing a really great job out here. What is it that's just really working for you in these conditions? <laughs> I wish I could tell you that, and I'll go out and try and duplicate it. But I don't know. I felt comfortable this morning, and I don't, no answer to that. I'm just going to try and try and do what I did this morning, and yeah, be towards the front with these guys. Best of luck out there, David Anthony, taking a step back from his superbike responsibility, still running the team, but running the super sport for the remainder of this season, guys. Yeah, and no stranger to podiums in super sport as he was a regular a podium appearance guy back in the day, just a few years ago, Jason Pridmore. Let's take a look at New Jersey Motorsports Park, JP. It's the shortest one we have on the calendar, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You see that pretty good run down to turn one there, Greg, up over that blind turn two into that 3ABC section. Uh, a little tricky on the exit there as it goes off camber, a little wheelie heel after that. Track's got a lot of uh, interesting characteristics to it. If you get over that turn seven, eight, nine, you're on the right side of the tire for a long time, so it'll be tricky here in that rain. There's a couple big sealant patches there in turn 10, Greg. Some guys are choosing to go through those sealant patches. Some are going around. You'll see that here in a minute. And then you know, the real important run through the S's onto that front straightaway, pretty fast turn 12. Wide open in the dry, probably not so much in the wet though. 
Yeah, there's definitely uh, some characteristics of this racetrack that aren't the best in the rain. But keep an eye on this number 23. That's not Michael Jordan, that's Anthony Maziato. He is a hometown favorite. He's a fourth qualifier. He's looking to go for a big W. Well, we heard Hannah talking to David Anthony, and uh, I'll tell you, you know, he had a good run in dry qualifying in fifth, but this morning uh, he ended up a second and a half clear of the field in the wet. Anthony Maziato was second, and uh, Maz uh, qualified fourth in the dry. Josh Hayes right up there. Uh, but David Anthony, in these conditions, he might have something for this field. Yeah, and just really fast in the wet, even today, he said it was really good in the wet. Hasn't rode a lot in the wet the last couple of years, but he has to be feeling pretty good after that warm up today, uh, being so much quicker than the other guys. And I even remember a couple of years ago in a superbike race being on the podium with uh, David. Anthony at Road America in the wet. So obviously a lot of wet riding for him. He has the confidence. And that's all that wet riding is. It's just about the guys who have more confidence with the bikes moving around a little bit more compared to the dry. You know, when you think about it, I think Jake Lewis, best qualifying of the season in this category, center of that front row. Uh, be interesting to see what uh, he could pull off. We know Tyler, uh, you know, Ty Scott has been really, really quick. But, you know, you got a guy named Josh Hayes uh, who has been in, you know, probably every conceivable condition uh, that he's raced in. And, uh, you know, talking to him a little bit earlier today, he said, uh, yeah, I, I just I just I just feel calm. I just, you know, I just know what I want to do out there. And he's going to be tough. I yeah. mean, he's tough all the time, even in the dry. But today he's probably the one with the most experience around here that, you know, in this class at the front, you know, just being around here a couple of years, we've had a lot of rain races here at, at New Jersey that uh, Josh has been part of and been really fast. So today uh, you better keep your eye on the, the number four because he's going to be at the front. No question about that. And I think a guy this is who has a huge opportunity here uh, in terms of gaining that valuable experience as he continues what's been uh, a, a really good season is Teague Hobbs. You know, qualified back a little bit, was even a, a one spot slower this morning. Uh, but this bike, this class in the wet, pretty foreign territory for him because, uh, you know, obviously if he can stick with these guys, he can learn a ton today. Yeah, and try to just complete the race, get yep. as many laps as possible and see how the, the track's going to be different. Right now, like, it's not even really raining, so you might go through and there might not be too many puddles <laughs> after a couple laps. You know, one of those little cells can pop up and it could be a downpour. So for him, this is a great opportunity for him to just get laps and see what it's like. And then, of course, Chavi Forez uh, slated to start farther back. I don't see him out there. He's on there. the third row outside. Oh, that's right, with the new leathers. So that's right, the new look on the bike. So he's there. And then let's not forget Kayla Yakov, even though this is uh, only her second weekend on a super sport bike, she has been brilliant in the wet. She put on a clinic here a couple of years ago uh, in uh, the Junior Cup. So let's see uh, what she might have in, uh, in store for us here. But we are getting ready to get going in the super sport race, second to the last race of the season in this series. Moto America Super Sport coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. Hello everyone and welcome back to New Jersey Motorsports Park. Super Sport race number one is just moments away and as you can see the conditions are a bit Concerning out here, it's been wet all day today, quite different from the conditions we saw in the dry yesterday. Now, something that I've been asking a lot of the riders throughout the paddock is how different does the setup need to be from yesterday to today? Because obviously these conditions are so different. Some of them talking about softening the overall demeanor of the bike, chassis changes, suspension changes. You know, the Suzuki's with the throttle by wire have made some power delivery changes. But one rider that we talked to on the grid, he didn't mention this, but David Anthony is so comfortable with his dry setup that it translated perfectly into the wet that all he did was throw some reins on it. That's actually pretty right. sometimes it very just interesting. Works. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it just works. I mean, what Hannah's talking about is some people changing the entire geometry of their bike shocks and springs and everything. Starting grid, Ty Scott, Jake Lewis, and Josh Hayes on the front row. Then we have Maziato, David Anthony, and Teague Hobbs a little further back. Not used to seeing Chavi Forrest come from the third row, but that's where he'll be today. Lamondre Jr., Nassani next to them, Silva. Schultz and Carl Schultz. Then we got Kaylee Yakov and Owen Williams and uh, Declan Van Roslin. 
Silva again. Bruno Silva this time. Jacob Crossman and CJ LaRoche. A little bit further back, Joel Holman, Fernando Silva, Chris Murphy, and Ezra Zaragoza. Got to watch out for that Kayla Yako. Is she in Junior Cup? Any or yeah, Junior Cup was known to be a bit of a range specialist. Really we'll see range. if she gets more laps on that Kawasaki, if she can work her way up through the field. How important to get a good start, Jay? Super important. If you're on the first two rows, you know, when I was riding, I was always thinking about, got to get to the front as quickly as I can just for the spray. Didn't want to be, uh, I didn't want to suffer from getting a bad start and getting shuffled back because of the visibility, Greg. So uh, for some of these riders, I think first two rows, um, the important thing is if you can get to that front a little bit quicker, you got to focus on this run down to turn one have a little bit clearer vision. So you can see everybody's got the clear visors on. The rain right now doesn't look like it is coming down as much. Obviously the track is very wet. Rain tires are the only choice and uh, and will be for probably most of the day as we get ready to start. Purple livery for the Mount Airy Casino Resort of Chavi Forest. Get used to that. And here we go, 14 laps scheduled for Super Sport Race number one. And we're away. Josh Hayes looks like the front row all got a good launch. Josh got a bad start though, Greg. I think the, the initial clutch let out was good. It's gonna be Ty Scott leading the way down into there. And how about Chavi Forrest coming from that third row on the outside, he's able to put himself up into second place. Chavi Forrest, not 100%. Jason, he raced in Magny Corps in France last weekend in the Boldor 24 hour race and had a crash. A high side landed on both his feet and he has been gingerly walking around this paddock all weekend long. A hindrance or a help for him here having rain conditions? Uh, probably it's not really, I, I wouldn't say it's either. You know, with the, with the rain, he's not going to have to put as much through the pegs, but through the, in the dry, he's going to have a lot more grip, so he'll feel more comfortable. It was actually at Paul Ricard. It was the last oh, turn sorry, Paul, Paul Ricard. Ricard yeah. yeah, they used to run that at, at Magny Corps, like you say, but it wasn't Paul Ricard, and uh, he's been passed already. Greg, you see Josh Hayes is now right behind Chavi Fords. I believe it's Maziato who has slotted himself into that second spot. Can't see the number from here, but it looks like Anthony Maziato. But Ty Scott right now, Definitely with his head down, confidence at the front. I'm looking back a little further to see where Dave Anthony is, and you can see him back there behind Jake Lewis. Surprising to see both them that far back as they were both quick in morning warm-up. We saw Kayla Yakov, to your point, she moves through, so she's gonna be, looks up, up in top eight or nine spots already. So Ty Scott out front in the Vision Wheel M4X star Suzuki, his teammate Teague Hobbs back there. Leading the way from a couple other Suzuki is David Anthony looking for some room up the inside of Jake Lewis. You see him leaning on the outside of Jake Lewis. That is like real trust there. And you got to trust the guy that you're riding around. Jake Lewis goes around the out back around the outside of that patch and goes past Teague Hobbs as Dave Anthony is able to get by both of them in just those two corners. There's the 19 of Kelly Yakov, Pennsylvania resident. So this local race for the Titler Cycle Racing Kawasaki ZX6R. In the draft, looking for some clear visor is the 19. She got through on Teague Hobbs, so 19 is on her way forward, Greg. And uh, that's going to move her up into seventh place on this first lap. She's going to be all over the back of Jake Lewis now. As you can see, the battle just in front of them. That's Teague Hobbs. This is the battle for the lead now as Maziato has caught Teague Hobbs. He's trying to go underneath him. Josh Hayes now closes up on both of them. So you got the front three of Tyler Scott, Anthony Maziato, and Josh Hayes now covered up with a blanket as Josh Hayes goes underneath Maziato. Maziato tries to turn it back underneath him. Isn't going to be able to do it. Josh Hayes couldn't use as much front lever as he wanted to. Last corner to slow the bike down and just had to roll through the corner as Ty Scott having it his way. A nice clear view as well in front of him. And Jay, here at NJMP, it gets a little bit tricky in a couple of areas with being able to see. It's a little one line and you add spray to that. Yeah, you can see the mud on the track there, Greg, on the outside of turn six there. And uh, and it's weird because what the rain does too, Greg, is there's gonna be places where people feel comfortable in some spots and not as comfortable in, in, in others. As you can see here, Josh Hayes is trying to go around the outside of Ty Scott up into the turn nine area. And uh, there'll be some, so that's why you'll see that slinky effect of that they'll be good in some spots and not in others. And there's a couple patches here. They're getting ready to go over one there. So you can't be too aggressive on the throttle on those patches as there's different grip levels compared to the normal asphalt and then getting out of those patches. So pretty tricky and local track knowledge helps. And that's what you're seeing from Anthony Maziato. First time by the stripe it was Maziato who went fastest lap of the race at a 48. Point four, and now it's Josh Hayes who goes 44.327 and we expect to see these lap times vary dramatically during the course of the race depending on what the weather does. If the sky opens up again they'll slow down. If it stays like this 
We expect it to be wet the entire race. Lap times are still going to start dropping because riders are going to be finding and getting more comfortable with the available traction out there. Let's get to Hannah Lopa, who has more. Hannah? Speaking of available traction, I talked to M4's data engineer when it comes to Tyler Scott specifically, and for the rain, you need to soften the power delivery and balance it with the ignition timing to make it smoother, to get that tire to really hook up and drive. They didn't have a lot of rain data with this bike and these electronics as Josh Hayes makes the pass on Tyler Scott, but Tyler is not afraid to push the limit in the rain. He feels really comfortable, and he feels like he has a really sound idea of specifically where that limit is and how far he can really take that risk. Yeah, now that Josh Hayes leads the way too, it's going to give Ty Scott another benchmark on how to judge his performance as well. As Maziato still in the back end, as the veteran Hayes starts to try to gap the two behind him, and he's doing a good job so far, JP. Yeah, right now you can see this is where he was really comfortable the last lap. He was trying to go around the outside of Ty Scott all the way up through this section, and it just seems like there's places where the other two can kind of close up. Maziato now is going to want to try to get by Ty Scott as early as he can. You're going to see here, these guys, like you said, Greg, they're all going through that patch right there. There's a number of riders that are going to the outside of it. The fastest way still looks like the inside line and going over that patch and close that distance. So now we got to see if Maziato can start to work on Ty Scott. Ty looked a little tentative down in the 3, 3B and 3C area the last time by. That's where Hayes was able to get a run on him on the exit of 3C and go past. So we'll see if Maziato has learned anything from that. Moving the lap time benchmark further is Josh Hayes at a 142.819 to Ty Scott's 44.17. Bottom of your screen, you can see now the gap when they came across the start finish line was 1.3, but Hayes continuing to just chip away and create a larger and larger gap of this 14 lap affair as we have about 10 and a half laps to go here around New Jersey Motorsports Park. Yeah, this is the spot where Hayes was able to get up alongside Ty Scott last time by. Problem is, is that the worst thing that can happen in these conditions, Greg, is feeling frantic, like the guy is really getting away. Right now, as Hayes is, looks like Maziato had a notion there to try to go up underneath Ty Scott into turn number five, wasn't able to get that done. But this isn't the kind of weather that you can kind of start to just automatically hit the push button because it will come up and it'll grab you so quickly. So right now for Ty Scott and Maziato, not seeing Josh completely disappear from them, it's gonna give them a little bit of confidence, but still trying to bridge that gap, you have to take bigger risks. And you can see, look at Maziato. He is now doing what Hayes tried to do a couple of laps ago, and that is go around the outside of Ty Scott, but it's just, a, it's too long of a distance around. Yeah, it definitely is. And one thing to keep in mind here in the States, we just don't race in the rain a ton like they do in Europe as well. So some of these riders, this this is not a lot of experience on these motorcycles in these conditions. And that bodes for the exact, or that goes for the teams as well. As these riders, especially young rider like Ty Scott, he's still learning what he likes in the rain. A guy like Josh Hayes has so much experience, Jason. Yeah. He could probably turn to his team and say, I want this setting on my shock. I want this setting on my fork to soften it up, to do this, this is the way I like it. But maybe with Ty Scott and his crew, they're learning what he likes. And this is part of that maturation process as they keep continuing to gather more data. As we look ahead to tomorrow, it could be these similar conditions. Josh is so good from turn 10 through the S's and onto the front straightaway. And that's really where he did his, his, does his damage as well. As you can see, these guys all going through that turn 3B, C area right now. This is the area that that lap there, Josh was awful quick. Uh, even though in our timing, it looks like they all pretty much did the same thing. His gap opened up quite a bit in that one specific spot. Good look at Maziato and the focus and concentration it takes to get one of these bikes around here. And it's good to see we've got two R6s up in that top three spots right now. So again, sometimes, Greg, you know, when you look at the 750, what's that 750 been known for this year a little bit? What's it been known for? Uh, torque, acceleration yeah, and top torque, speed, yeah. Torque and top speed, and I think you know, riding our bike around in the torque curve sometimes is a little bit harder. And uh, so, you know, for my, uh, for Ty Scott right now, that might be something that they can help adjust even tomorrow, depending on what his information is when he comes back. And Jason, for Josh Hayes, he's trying to pull the pin and leave these guys behind him. And back to what Greg was saying about setup, Josh certainly knows what it is that he's looking for out of a rain setup. And I asked him, he said, bike's pretty good, but it's more so about surviving these conditions, staying focused and trying to avoid making mistakes because there is such a smaller margin for mistake in these conditions. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, is he's been around the block a few times, as we know, and 
limiting the amount of uh, mistakes that you make in these conditions is the key. Being consistent, being able to do the same thing over and over again and feeling for the same stuff. Generally in our sport, tracks don't change from lap to lap, you know, especially on a dry track. And how about this? This Dave Anthony, Kayla Yakov has worked herself all the way up into fifth place on that Tyler Cycle 6 uh, 636 Kawasaki and she is right on the back of Dave Anthony now she went made the pass on Jake Lewis a lap earlier so for Kayla right now Greg I mean when anything can happen in these races and if those front three have any problems this could be a potential battle for a podium between her and Dave Anthony she has been the faster of the two 43 2 la last time by she was a half second quicker than the 52 of David Anthony Legit in the rain is Kayla Yako. We have seen her in Junior Cup be absolutely blistering fast. And how does that translate to two classes up as she was in Revit Twins Cup at one point in the season and got the call to get on the Titler Cycles Kawasaki in Supersport just a couple races ago. And here she is battling for a top four position. And she spoke to me about the seating difference, the seating position difference on this bike compared to the R6. And she has ridden a, another middleweight Supersport bike that she has ridden in and put a lot of laps on. She explained to me also about the acceleration of this bike compared to that one as well. So the thing is, is it's been a whole learning curve for her, especially when you consider the fact that she got on that bike for the first time at Coda, 100 plus degree heat. She'd never ridden the motorcycle, never seen the track. And so for her right now, now she's getting a completely different education as far as the conditions that she's having to ride this bike and she's top five. I mean, it's an, it's an incredible ride by her right now. So you're looking at two completely different motorcycles in terms of how they were produced, how they were developed. Ahead of Kayla Yakov on that Kawasaki ZX6R. It's a 636 displacement motorcycle versus David Anthony on the wrenched motorcycles. That's a GSXR 750. You might be asking yourself, how do these two motorcycles compete together? That's all part of next generation super sport and the rules that we've had for the last two seasons. The GSXR 750 is balanced through rules that we have through changing the throttle body system to a throttle by wire system and allow ECU controls. In terms of the Kawasaki ZX6R, Jason, that motorcycle doesn't have that ability. So how that bike is balanced in terms of performance is actually done with adding weight to the motorcycle. So there are a variety of ways in which these motorcycles are balanced to compete on an equal playing field. And of course, add to the fact that you have Rain, the great equalizer, and with Kayla Yakov only being on that bike for a couple of races, you're looking at the result now. Josh Hayes still leads the way, 1.9 over Ty Scott. Anthony Maziato, another half a second back. Then you're looking at David Anthony on the 52. And he is about 11 seconds back from the leaders. And then Kayla Yakov, Jake Lewis, Nassani, Hobbs, Forez, Chavi back there in ninth place after a really good start. Then Bruno Silva, your top 10. But another look at the veteran Josh Hayes getting after it on that Squid Hunter Yamaha R6. Yeah, pay attention to his body movements. When you watch him right now, look at the little body movements that Josh makes. It's very subtle. Body gets set for corners very soon. But if you watch what he does, even in that S section, all the movements are very small, very deliberate, trying to transfer that weight as smooth as he can to try to create as much grip as he can. All of his inputs are gonna be a little less with the bars. His throttle application is gonna be very smooth and deliberate as well. And, uh, and I saw him actually short shift the bike between turns nine and 10. So he's going back a gear to help slow the bike down, then up shifting the gear. And you'll see it again in that nine, 10 area. This is the three A, B and C. And he's really oh. just put the pressure on these guys. And you can see Ty Scott just gets shot up out of the seat a little bit. They're all in the 41s. Hayes that time by was half a second quicker though, Greg. Yeah, talk about pressure. I think that right now the Northeast Cycle Outlet Racing rider Anthony Maziato is definitely putting pressure on the Vision Wheel M4X star Suzuki of Ty Scott. And that might have caused that a little aggression with the throttle. Yeah, and that's one of those things where you just feel, you see Ty here, he's just getting on the gas, hits bump, that little seam, little, yeah, yeah. that little seam or a little bit of a bump. And that's sometimes all it takes. But that's the bike just basically saying, listen, I can't really get pushed too much harder than this. And again, you're gonna see Maziato with a big run here. He looks like he wants to go up and around the outside. And I think that Maziato might have a little bit of pace. I don't know how you feel about that, but I feel like he's he got a little bit of pace, but he's just probably a little frustrated right now. Just can't get by Ty in a right spot. Especially when you know how much acceleration your bike is capable of in the dry. And sometimes you're asking a little oh, bit. Oh, Hayes. Oh. Hayes is down. So Josh Hayes throws it down the road just after that patch section that we were talking about. A place that's really 
caused a lot of riders to go down. Hayes, unfortunately, trying to get his Squid Hunter Racing Yamaha R3, R6 back up and running. And it doesn't look like he's broken any bars or anything, Jay. No, and he'll still be able to, I, I saw Kayla and Dave Anthony go through. There you see it in the top of your screen. We were keying up on the, play, uh, the battle for second. And Hayes must have just hit that patch ever so slightly. You can see him sliding along. If there's nothing wrong with that bike, Josh will make a charge. I'm looking to see when he's gonna come across the line. I believe he's gonna be fifth or sixth, Greg, when he comes across the line because I didn't see Jake Lewis come through that lap. So gonna keep an eye on our timing and scoring. There's Jake behind him. There's Jake behind yeah. him. So, so they, there's the 85 of Lewis on the Disrupt Racing. That's also a GSX-R 750. So that battle that we were talking about for the possible podium position, these two guys now are battling for a win. And boy, Maziato would love to get a win here at his home track. It's remember we we, we went without Anthony for a couple of uh, yes. for a couple of years, yep. and then he's back. And this team has done a great job providing him a bike, and uh, we've seen him on the podium once already this year. But he, the, the the best other story, Greg, is going to be that battle for third. Dave Anthony and Kayla Yakov going for that battle for third. Hayes that time by was 13 seconds behind Kayla when he so he's picked the bike up and he's 13 seconds back with six to go. So the that's an ask. Yeah, that is that, a, that's, that's going to be an ask, yeah. especially because of the first lap. He's going to be spending the majority of his time checking his bike over, making sure everything's OK and that every, you know nothing's fallen off or bent. So this is that section again. These guys are going through. And now, uh, they know, now they know they're battling for a win. For Maziato, this is where he's got to just keep his wits about him a little bit, stay calm. It looks like in certain spots he's got the better of Ty Scott. But, but we're, okay, we're going to get a look at lap times. Let's see what the lap times have done since Josh went out. They were in the 41s. They're back into the 42s now. 42-7 for Ty Scott, 43-1 for Anthony Maziato. And we are seeing a little bit of wheel spin from Ty Scott. And back there, David Anthony and Kayla Yakov in the 41s, 41-5 to 41-6. And there's still three tenths just between those two as we continue to look at this battle for the lead. This is the most difficult thing with rain conditions, Jay, because nothing is a sure thing when it comes to these conditions, especially here at NJMP. There's the battle for third. Yeah, this is a big battle now. And Kayla's been extremely strong into turn one. The majority of her passes have been down there in turn one. So for her now, it's all about trying to draw up on the back of David Anthony. You can see she does a nice job on the brakes there going into fast turn four uh, and, and even into five. You can see that it puddles a little bit across there. So. Yeah, but that also has been where she was strong in Junior Cup. Yeah. And I think the difference is that David Anthony is getting it slowed down a little bit more to the corner, but you can see when he gets out of it, he's using more of that GSX-R 750 acceleration to try to keep that gap about the same. Although David Anthony in sector number two just set the fastest sector time, a 22.593. Kayla goes her personal best at a 22.6. So she's matching it back there. And if these two aren't careful, I mean, those two, <laughs> those two behind them, David Anthony and Kayla Yakov, may catch this lead group. Look at, look at how close Maziato is now. Like he's a lot closer this lap than even the last one. So getting through this last corner as good as he can, get up on that front straightaway. He's got to try to get closer to do anything down into turn one. I'm just trying to figure out the best place for Maziato to make this pass. He's good through turn four on the little short shoot to turn five. And you can see Dave Anthony now comes across at a 41-2. He was one and a half seconds quicker than the leaders. And that's why you've seen that tiny gap now between him and Kayla start to stretch out as Dave Anthony with four laps to go is kind of maybe found some. There's a bike on the left over there. I, I don't know what that. that was. There was a bike on the yeah. left. Don't know if it, no, definitely not one of our leaders as you see the two leaders here. And this is where Maziato's good. If he gets close enough, he's gonna try to roll through this next fast right-hander, roll through it and try to position himself on the inside of Ty Scott. See how he's got a little bit of a run, but he's not quite close enough to do anything with him. The bike on the ground was the 32 of Joe Lamandry Jr. Bazooka Joe on the deck. So we know for the Michael Gilbert rider, he is out of this one, but up front, Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki's Ty Scott. And you have the Northeast Cycle Outlet Racing's Anthony Maziato. Next generation bike in the GSX-R 750 up front. Going against the older generation Yamaha R6. The stalwart of the class. And Jay, this is where it's all interesting for Maziato. Do you push the issue? It also seems that Maziato has good visibility. He doesn't seem to be too bothered 
sitting behind Ty Scott. And the other thing I've noticed, Jay, is it doesn't look like it's been raining that much since right. we started this race. Yeah. And there are certain parts where the spray isn't as bad as it was at the beginning of the race. It's still coming down. I it can, is still coming down. I can down. see it out of our commentary position here. It's still definitely coming down a little bit. It's more of a cross. When they come onto this front straightaway, it's blowing across because we still have a little bit of a breeze here. A little bit of a breeze. Yeah, we still have a breeze. So <laughs> the wind is blowing it's hard. Blow, it's blowing straight down that front straightaway. And you look back there, Dave Anthony oh! again. It's Mistake from Anthony Maziato, Jason. Unfortunately for Maziato, he got into turn one, just couldn't get the bike slowed down comfortably. And oh. now a big gap, even though Ty Scott Ty goes Scott sideways. Gets it sideways. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I think Maziato can get back to the back of him. Both riders are in the 43s now. They've shown that they can do 41s. The riders behind him are the concern. Dave Anthony is coming forward right now. He just went 41-1. Kayla, 41-4. Both went quickest lap of their races. So these guys, the pace has slowed down to 43. That time, last time by, uh, Dave Anthony was two seconds quicker than the leaders. You see him there, Greg, just coming in, in the back of it. your corner. And uh, with three to go, you can see Maziato's already almost onto the back of Ty Scott again. You're going to see, Greg, that wind is pushing them. We were talking about it. It's actually pushing them down the front straightaway into the wind. And you see the bike get a little bit sideways. He was out in that puddly area, and, uh, and that's what really cost him. But look, it didn't really cost him a lot because the pace had gone back to where it was. It had gone down so much that uh, you can see he is now catching back up. I'm a little bit worried. I didn't see his, I want to make sure Dave Anthony's still back there. He's only four seconds back. Just looking yeah, back. Yeah, I think I just saw him flash him, by. But I only see one bike. Oh, you yeah. see that? Yeah. I don't see him. No, David Anthony. It's Kayla Yakov now in third. So Dave Anthony's had a problem. And now Kayla Yakov finds herself in third spot in this race. Kayla Yakov, could she find herself on the podium? We have just about two laps to go in Super Sport race number one. As Anthony Mazziato is able to reel in Ty Scott, now we're going to get in some lap traffic. As Joel Ullman, the number 92, as they peel it into turn number one, there should be blue waving flags for lap traffic to indicate the leaders are coming through. But I that doesn't mean that it's going to happen as he catches him in a really bad spot for the moment. Well, this is the worst spot you can catch somebody right down here. Dave Anthony did go by Greg at a minute 50, so he must have made a big mistake somewhere out on track for him to lose that much time. And you can still see these two leaders, they get through that turns three, A, B, and C. They got about a lap and a half left. Kayla that time again was 1.6 seconds quicker than the leader of the race. So for Kayla, she continues to improve. Maziano. Maziano. That's the spot where it looks like he wants to try. He wants to try to get up alongside Ty Scott going into turn five. It might be a park job on the last lap. We'll see if he's able to do that. Get up alongside and just park Tyler and just and, and try to just get the bike stopped. Yeah, it just seems like Maziato has more roll speed through some of these corners and able to initiate the throttle. But yes. it's about how to get by Ty Scott because he needs to, it feels like, get by him somewhere in the first three quarters of this racetrack because it's about the last quarter where Ty Scott seems to have Anthony Maziato's number and we're into that's right around that section right oh, now man. as Ty Scott sideways Jay I've been saying it for the last couple yep. laps it seems like there's something going on maybe um, Ty Scott has asked too much from that Dunlop rear rain tire and I can hear that bike spinning up Greg it's very low in the RPM there I can hear it sounds like a it's torque. on a 750 he's probably rolling through there in second and I saw Josh Hayes earlier backshift and then upshift out of that corner so the thing is is that when you get in that torque curve on these bikes it can definitely get a little tricky and uh, you can see Maziato now is closed up on the back look at Kayla Kayla is not that far back she just goes fastest lap of the race at a 40.6 so she is doing her best right now that that lap time was 2.3 seconds quicker than the leaders so Kayla on the 19 is moving forward as you see again in our replay Ty Scott gets out of shape now we're getting into that section. This is where Maziato is good. He's got to draw up on the back as they come out of this right-hander. He's got to draw up on the back of Ty Scott and get as close as he can. And then literally they're going to go through this fast right. And the 23 could try to roll around here. Not, not close enough. He's going to have a shot. Nope, not quite there. And look at Kayla. She's now drawing up to the back of these guys. 
1.6 seconds faster than the leader last time by, but there was a 2.4 second gap. So for Kayla Yakov, she needs Anthony Maziato to mess with Tyler Scott, but he's not close enough to do it if she's going to have a chance to win this race. Could this 16-year-old sensation take the Tyler Cycles Kawasaki and prove to everybody she deserved this ride? A podium is definitely good enough, but the race wins so close for Yakov. But Tyler Scott, all eyes forward on this final lap as he tries to get as whatever he has left out of that rear Dunlop rain tire as he turns the screws on that Vision Wheel M4X star Suzuki Maziato trying to close the gap. There's only a couple corners to go here, JP. And Tyler Scott looking pretty good as he bends it to the right. He's got to get a run at it. Does Anthony Maziato have anything? Really tricky final corner onto the front straightaway we go. In this final lap, it's Ty Scott to the checkered flag and will take the victory ahead of Maziato. Kaylee Yakov comes in third. Wow. Just 1.9 seconds behind. <laughs> How about that podium? Ty Scott, Maziato, the local guy, really proud of him to see that ride and effort from him and that team. <laughs> As you can see, it's a bit muddy out there. Oh. Be careful. And the team's going gonna great. Have to clean that bike all yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be careful out here in the slippery. But it's got to be Ty Scott, Anthony Maziato, and Kayla Yakov. Jason, you said I mean, it. What a podium. Unreal. I mean, good for her. I mean, Greg, and the fact that she went 40.7 with two laps to go, how much confidence is she going to have tomorrow when it, if it's raining again tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, that's what it does for these riders. Dave Anthony did bring it home in fourth. Josh Hayes, who we saw tip over, he ended up fifth. So that is your top five. As you see them come out of the last corner on this last lap. Ooh. Ty gets it sideways there, too. Yeah. And Kayla Yako with the fastest lap of the race, the lap before, a 140.650. And Josh Hayes ends up in fifth place after he tipped off ahead of Jarrett DeSaney, Jake Lewis. So it's David Anthony who finishes in fourth spot. And a look at Ty Scott's lap progression. And for him to go 141, 422, his fastest lap of the race on the last lap and spinning it sideways gives you a glimpse, and I mean a glimpse, of the talent that the number 70 has. Yeah, and when you think that, that he did that lap and Kayla went six tenths quicker than that lap of Ty Scott's, uh, that's impressive. You know, the thing about these conditions, Greg, is you've just got to be on point the whole time. There's no, there's no relax time. You know, in the dry, you take that for granted a little bit sometimes because you have grip, you know, and in these conditions, and especially at this place, uh, you know, we know that it's a little bit treacherous, but uh, the grip is out there. This guy had that bike sideways a lot during that race and uh, was still able to bring it home and, uh, and do a tremendous job. And, and like you said at the big top of the show, as you see our top three here on the left, uh, he's been on a bit of a tear lately. And uh, Ty Scott certainly yeah, has. And he's proving that he can win in the dry, and now he's proven that he can win in the wet. And, uh, you know, this is all about grooming, you know, a, a potential superbike rider in the future. So he's, he's done a really good job. And how about Anthony Maziato, the only rider that's going to stand on the podium who's of legal age to vote in the United States? <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's true. Ty Scott, 17 years old. Kayla Yakov, 16 years old. We're going to take a break. And when time goes by, we're going to be back and we're going to talk to our race winner, Scott, about that hectic rain race. Well, Roger, as we expected, an eventful race. And obviously, uh, up front, Josh Hayes looked like he had it covered, had a rare off for him. And uh, But the story's got to be Kayla Yakov, 13th to 3rd in these conditions. We know she's good in the rain, but this early on a, on a, on a super sport bike to do that, that's stunning. And not only that, you know, when she got into third, she didn't settle. Yeah. She, was, she was trying to chase those guys down and, and get a win. So just an impressive ride by her coming from 13th and just having to pass so many people. Yeah. And, and even when Dave Anthony went out, she was able to go even faster. So for her, it's got to be a huge confidence boost. And, and even for that team to step in there for Stefano and, and uh, get a podium. When she got on that podium in the Junior Cup in the wet, Gave her the confidence where she became one in the draw as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. 
Wow, what a story there. And again, Tyler Scott, uh, you know, as they said, fa his fastest lap of the race on the last lap, but man, he was fighting it, hanging on to it. And Maziato so close, and you know he would have loved it here, as they said. Um, and then uh, David Anthony uh, was flying and hit the, you know, you know coulda, shoulda, woulda stuff, right? Uh, but he had so much speed, uh, but just a brilliant race. And you know, the other side of the surprise equation, Chavi Forez, brilliant start up into second into turn one and then just faded i just think that this track is probably going to be a little bit different compared to the others that that he's raced on yeah. in the wet you know probably a little bit slicker where you know these guys are all used yeah. to it they know this track is slick so it's probably taking him a uh, a little bit to get used to it. It was a surprise for him. And he comes in injured, so he might not yeah, want to, you know, have another big crash. But these two guys here put on a, a great show. Looked like Anthony Maziato had a little bit more pace, but never could get close enough to make a clean pass. And Tyler Scott has just shown incredible racecraft. Yeah. He wasn't the yeah. fastest guy, nope. but he wins, and that's all that matters. And it's wet, uh, wet dry, it doesn't matter. He's able to put these races together in all different ways. He's led them now in winning. He can make a pass on the last lap and uh, now in the wet. Showed some poise. There's no question about that. But this young lady, wow, what a story for her. Again, uh, just uh, coming 13th to third in only her second weekend racing a super sport bike. Absolutely remarkable. Back here at New Jersey Motorsports Park as Ty Scott enters winner's circle, putting on a bit of a show for the fans. Jason, what do you think? A tense race? Yeah, well, not for us. We're sitting up here, <laughs> but for them, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think even for us, because we know how the conditions can be here or, or any in any rain race, as you see Chris Ulrich there congratulating his rider as well. I think that um, I just know how much focus it takes in these kind of in these kind of races. We're going to get a look here at these final results. I mean, you can see how much rain there is. Just look in that shot. Ty Scott wins, Greg, by two tenths over Maziato with Kayla Yako um, <laughs> gaining on them quickly. Anthony Hayes, Nassani, Jake Lewis, T. Cobbs, Chubby Forrest back there in ninth. Let's get down to Hannah with our winner. Tyler Scott told me earlier today he feels really comfortable kind of pushing the limit and finding where the, the edge of grip here is in these conditions. And it certainly looked like you were having a lot of fun out there testing where that limit was. Take us through that race. You were moving around quite a bit. How were you able to kind of balance that risk versus reward with Maz on your tail for the duration? Uh, yeah, for sure, Hannah. The, the whole race was uh, really on the edge, and Hayes was starting to get away. So I was trying to push under braking, acceleration, everything that I had. And I uh, had a few moments trying to chase him in the beginning. And... Uh, decided to just keep a keep a safer pace and uh, maintain second and then he uh, made a mistake coming out of turn 10 unfortunately ended up on the ground and w we were in the race lead then and um, I just wanted to keep pushing the pace so I know uh, David Anthony would be fast and everyone else would be catching back up to us if I wasn't pushing the pace and uh, yeah the the race, uh, I think the track got a little bit worse lap by lap and just adapting to that. And the whole Vision Wheel M4XR Suzuki team did an amazing job this weekend so far. The bike feels amazing. I'm happy with the bike. I'm happy with the team. And uh, a great feeling on the bike. And just a big thank you to everyone that came out, the f uh, my family, my friends, all the fans. It's cold. It's rainy. But uh, happy to see everyone here. Both from the Northeast, and I just overheard a conversation between you and Maz. You guys kind of grew up racing together. How is it to be out there again, dicing it up? Yeah, it, it's great to dice it up with the kids I grew up looking looking up to. And Mini GP just across here is where I grew up road racing, and it feels great to share a podium with him again. Congratulations, Tyler Scott. Speaking of Anthony Maziato, a podium at his home race second today, and you were putting the pressure on Tyler Scott throughout. Where were you looking to take a shot, and how much risk were you willing to take? Uh, there was a few areas that I had, like, in my pocket. I was trying to save to the end of the race. Once I had seen Hayes went down, unfortunately, uh, I just started having a really hard time seeing out of my shield, so I was just trying to, like he said, ride to the end and try and stay focused and stay as close as I could, so that way if he had made a mistake, I could pounce, but Tyler rode a great race, and, uh, you know, I really can't thank the Northeast Cycle Outlet boys enough, Geoscape Solar, Steve Kindle, uh, Alpha Omega, all these guys, Dynese, AGV, uh, Hustle Hard, all the boys that help us out and make us get here, it's awesome. We've been striving for this podium all year since Barber, and uh, I finally got it up here, so I'm really happy to do that for my my family and all my home crowd here in New Jersey, and it was super cool to see them come out and watch their race and be able to do this for them. 
a podium today, but were you able to take enough away from this race to go for the win tomorrow? Yeah, I got to work on a couple things, you know, maybe uh, my breathing a little bit so I don't fog up so much in my shield. Uh, it was pretty intense out there, but yeah, I'm definitely going to take back the notes that I got today. I rode a real long race behind Tyler, so I got a lot of uh, stuff to write down in the notebook and see what I can work on and maybe make a, us get up one more step tomorrow. Congratulations, Anthony Maziato. And rounding out your podium, her first ever super sport podium, Kayla Yakov. We know you love the rain. I know that you said that you hoped that it would rain, and it sure showed out for you. You were making some huge strides there. Take us through that race. I mean, fastest lap of the race, too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know that. I mean, um, just hopping on the super sport bike uh, last weekend at Coda, had no expectations to be to be on the podium or anywhere near it. And uh, I, I can't thank Titler Cycle Racing enough for giving me this opportunity. I mean, we wanted to get our feet wet in the class, and I, I think we definitely did this weekend. And uh, yeah, it was just a battle of staying up, trying to uh, close down the gap. And when I saw them coming closer to me and uh, David made a mistake, I, I knew I had to put my head down. So. It was a great race. Thank you to everyone for staying behind me this year. It's been really difficult, um, you know, from, from losing my grandmother to having a lot of uh, bad injuries. Just, I'm super happy to be here. Thank you to Mission, Medallia, uh, Revit, HJC, Dragonfly Coffee Roasters, Sage Tailoring, um, Bo Phillips, uh, Reset Public Affairs. Thank you, for ever thank you for everything. Now, how many more laps do you think you would have needed to make a go for the win? Man, the, the, the conditions were super tricky out there, so uh, I, I'm glad the race ended where it did because it was getting pretty sketchy out there. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the ride, and uh, yeah, I'm, thank you to everyone. Congratulations, Kayla Yakov, rounding out your podium. And guys, the rain is picking up out here. Uh, it's picking up again. And Jay, you know, we mentioned she had the fastest lap of the race, a 140.650. Mm -hmm. She backed that up on the last lap of the 140.799. Yeah. She was the only rider in the entire race to go in the in the 140s. Yeah, to answer the question that Hannah gave to her, I think it would have been one more lap maybe. She would have been yeah. on the back of them pretty easily. But, uh, you know, that uh, the thing is, is it gives you so much confidence going into tomorrow now. All these riders kind of know what to expect. You heard Maziato talking about the, the shield uh, fogging up on him and things. And, uh, and, and that can be helmet to helmet. And because we don't see these conditions all the time, and you might be wearing a helmet that you don't know how it's going to react. And when it starts fogging up, not only do you have the stuff, the mist and stuff from the rider in front of you, but then you have your own breath fogging up the inside of the windshield. So it becomes a, such a distraction. And uh, but but for all three of them, I mean, what an incredible ride for all three riders. Yeah, there are ways to combat that too with the fogging up of the windshield. Yeah, we might see a bunch of duct tape over his nose tomorrow <laughs> yeah, right. or something crazy thing. So we'll see it, but. We're going to step away to NJMP as the rain starts to fall harder. Our coverage will continue here in Millville, New Jersey. It is a crazy weather day here at the racetrack. Well, courtesy of Tropical Storm Ophelia, we have another band of rain that is coming through, and it is pummeling down right now. But nobody on that podium minds this one bit right now. That is a great podium. And, uh, you know, Tyler uh, just showing what he's capable of. Maz at, at a track he knows so close. And uh, interesting, you know, because we were wondering, why wasn't he making a little bit more of an attack? And now we know is visibility. And you've talked about how crucial that is. Uh, but then Kayla, I mean, fastest lap, only rider, as you heard uh, Jason Pridmore say, into the 140s, uh, Jason and Greg into the 140s, and did two in a row at the end of the race when it was at its worst, Rod. At the end of the race, I think the track was starting to slow down a little bit yeah. because the – you know, the rain was starting to pick up a little bit more. You could see there was a couple more puddles, and she was going quicker. Yep. So for her, just able to concentrate like that. And she's fast in the rain, but it's not – I mean, she's young, so she hasn't had a lot of experience. Moto America Supersport coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit Geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. Back at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Race number one is in the books. And just as the, a lot of the riders were talking about how conditions were getting worse out there, but luckily for them, they stopped and now the rain is coming down. And Hannah is still down there in the rain hustling. We found some shelter for this interview. I also found Josh Hayes. Josh, leading quite a few laps of that race there. The rain caught you out. The conditions caught you out. T tell us what it was. 
Well, sometimes you ride her for the wind, sometimes she bucks you, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not very forgiving in conditions like that. I made one little mistake that I couldn't make. And uh, I mean, I knew the spot, I knew it was bad. Uh, I just caught it with a little more lean angle than I had before. It was a little more of a hit to the front end where I'd been keeping some angle out of it. And uh, unfortunately, I tipped over. Uh, I was glad I was able to pick it back up and get going pretty quickly and in a good position. And it's just unfortunate to fall down out of a potential win, you know, being in the lead and feeling pretty good. And I mean, even after I got back out there and going, I was matching or a little faster than what I did before I crashed. So overall, my riding is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how that's going. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be in the battle again tomorrow. If we see the same conditions, I think it'll be a, a good race. You were able to pick that motorcycle up and keep circulating the track. How was it feeling underneath you? And, and how do you refocus yourself and put your head down? You know, honestly, uh, unfortunately, I gave the guys some good practice over at Squid Hunter. I've tucked the front a couple of times this year, so we made some uh, adjustments so that the, the controls were able to stay in place a little bit better. I still had a foot peg, handlebar was still good. The only thing was the clutch lever had moved a little bit, so that first grip of it, you know, was a little different feel, but uh, otherwise the bike was fantastic. Like I said, I was able to match or even go a little bit faster there in the second half of the race. And I was looking, I could kind of see Dave Anthony a little ways up the road and I, I was doing pretty good lap times. I wasn't making much ground. And then when I, when I originally saw him, like the, the gap kind of halved, you know, I go, D wait, I, at first I didn't think it was Dave. I thought we were lapping somebody. And then I realized it was him and I go, oh, is he having a problem? But then his next lap was pretty good again. So. I didn't really have much for him to get back to fourth, but uh, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to pick it up, stay in the top five. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, yep, yeah, we'll go out there and we'll try to do something better tomorrow. Kind of take me through the beginning of that race. I know you wanted to take advantage of that front row start, but you and Tyler Scott really early laps. Yeah, no, I really had a terrible start. Uh, I, I got shuffled back pretty far. I had to muscle my way into turn one a little bit. and. Uh, you know, I don't want to give too much away. I did two, two siding laps, so I was able to scuff the tires in a little bit better. It allowed me to be a little more aggressive in that first lap. So the hard part was finding positions to be able to make moves. And, uh, you know, I, I was feeling the bike out. Everything felt pretty good, so I was pretty confident. I knew the areas where I wasn't terribly strong, but I had a few where I was pretty darn good. So I just tried to focus on those few areas. And uh, and then to fall down in one where you knew you need to be careful was kind of silly. So uh, something I tell my students not to do, and then here I go and do it. <laughs> We're all guilty when we want to win sometimes. Well, it sounds like Josh Hayes has a great plan for tomorrow's race, guys. Oh, yeah, he definitely will. He, he knows where. Honest. He's yeah. just on. I love the thing that's... You know, he's a veteran, so he's very honest about things. And you made a mistake in a place that he already knew was a little bit treacherous to start. And, uh, you know, it just it happens to the best. But, you know, Greg, you ride so close to the edge. And in these conditions, it's so easy to go over those edges. Um, and, and for him, even the smallest little tiny nothing of a mistake that would just get erased if it was dry or if the conditions were a little bit better, um, it, it gets magnified and you, f and you fall over. Yeah, J Josh talked about uh, some things you can do, the team can do to make the bike more crash worthy. We'll talk about that in a second as we take a look at what happened here in race number one. Yeah, you see, you see Josh on the left-hand side, he didn't get the best start. Ty Scott did, and you see Forez is right there. Maziato was in third early. Josh back there in fourth place, uh, trying to make his way through. Maziato made his way through. Dave Anthony made his way through. Everybody kind of was able to get through and past on Chavi Forez. The big mover there was the 19 of Kaleako moving forward, but by the time Hayes got up to the back of Ty Scott. He was able to go past him and get through. Now it left Ty Scott and Maziato to battle over second place and try to figure out those spots where they could try to make a move too. As you see Kayla here, she went down the inside of Jake Lewis going into turn one, and drew up to the back of then fourth place, uh, uh, Dave Anthony. In this shot here, you're gonna see Hayes sliding up there in the grass. That's the mistake that he told himself he shouldn't make and he did. And it's one of those things that just happened. Now Ty Scott, and Maziato kind of had it their own way, but they, the pace, once Hayes went out, went two seconds slower and it allowed Kayla to close up to the back of these two guys as they come across the line. First and second, Kayla ends up with a tremendous third and only her second Super Sport weekend here with us at Hunter America. She did at least two laps that were faster than the leaders by almost three quarters of a second. Yeah, she had the first and second fastest lap of the race, didn't she? Yes. Exactly, yeah. So for Ty Scott, 
He is definitely the rider right now, Jason, that is on fire. I mean, he has done such an outstanding job late in the season. It's just a little bit too late for this championship. As we know, Chavi Forrest, who is ninth in the race, is the champion. But Ty Scott, with only 25 points left in the season, is ahead of Josh Hayes, solidifying that second place. Of course, it was great for Ty Scott. And of course, Mesa, not in super sport any longer as he graduated to the Medallia Superbike class. And Maziato jumps up, tying right now with Jake Lewis. Michael Gilbert, not in the series anymore as well, continuing to recover from injury. Well, Jay, it's been very interesting this day. Rain, they say, is the great equalizer. And what a podium we've seen in super sport. We get to do this all again tomorrow. What do you think? I think it's going to be a lot of the same. We saw Declan. I don't think he made the start, unfortunately. So hopefully he'll be back out. It's going to be another crazy day tomorrow, it looks like. A lot of information about how to set up your bike in the rain and the things to do and not to do. For Hannah Lopa and Jason Pridmore, I'm Greg White. Thanks so much for checking out Moto America's Super Sport race number one. We get to do it all again for race number two.